Hello friend, how is it going? Welcome back to Toyota Maintenance YouTube channel. Here you can see with me this beautiful 1996 Toyota Tacoma 4-wheel drive. She has approximately 250,000 miles on the odometer and she's equipped with the 4-cylinder engine. In our case it's a 3RZ FE. And the reason for today's visit was not regular maintenance, it was check engine light on. The owner said the drivability is the same, there are no changes in power or anything, but there is a check engine light on. You can see manual for wheel drive. So I hooked the scanner to the port right here and there was only one code. And the code was P0402 Exhaust Gas Recirculation Flow Excessive Detected. So I wrote down all the data which was stored. Just this is older vehicle, so it wasn't much. It was clear the engine was already warmed up. And there was not conclusive to diagnose and say hey this is wrong so I erase the code and start looking in the engine and when I looked at it obviously you immediately start looking for the EGR valve which is right here I can see the it's a vacuum modulator valve seems to be new I'm studying the vacuum lines and it basically says that the EGR is sending too much of exhaust gases into the intake. So I immediately disconnected this line. I started up the engine. I applied the vacuum to it and because it was idling and it's cold the engine started immediately struggling to run and died because that EGR is not supposed to be open at these conditions. So I knew the EGR without removing the valve and studying the lines I knew the EGR valve is most likely operating correctly. So I grabbed my factory repair manual and went for the code, the explanation and procedures how to diagnose this. They say your first step is supposed to be measure resistance of the EGR temperature sensor. Do you see that when I'm pointing my finger at? That's a sensor. So I disconnected this from the harness to the vehicle which is there. It's still disconnected. I took my multimeter and attached it or connected it to these two con connections which are inside. And the manual clearly says it has to be resistance, which is in ohms right here, needs to be higher than 2.5 kilo ohms. It's supposed to be measured on the engine cold and my measurement was 258 kilo ohms when I was touching those two pins. That means the EGR gas temperature sensor it's okay. And the very next step is this fella. What is this? This is called VSV in that manual. And it was located right down there. Held, the bracket was held by 12 millimeter bolt. So, in the back, you can see hopefully the connector. I will zoom on it so you see it. I couldn't film that. I couldn't deal with it. Uh, there's no access to the camera and so on. So you see the electric connector and two lines, two vacuum lines, which came down there. 
The bracket was mounted right there in what is on the center of the screen. And the manual says something how to test it, but it's very simple. I got interrupted by the delivery guy who brought a new part. You are wondering, well, Peter, that's not Toyota. Toyota part is right here, the bad one. Well, I called the dealer and they don't have it. And the owner of this truck would love to have the truck back today. So here we go, aftermarket people. Now, how you test this valve? Very simple way. First, you take a Genio multimeter and you touch both contacts. And there should be approximately on the new valve 36 ohms. And this is open. It's completely, the circuit is broken, this valve is bad, and right here it's open. I realize there's a lot of non-believers, so I will go ahead and touch the pins and just show you that is open and nothing's happening and when I'm sliding on it. So the other method is that you get your 12 volts and carefully you attach to the one pin and then apply without touching the other one. You apply 12 volts, 12 volts and the valve will be audibly clicking on and off, on and off, on and off. So I already know this is bad and it needs to be replaced. Let's, for comparison, we have the brand new one. Let's see if it is really 36 ohms or what the numbers will be. So I will do exactly the same. Now look at that. 37.2, 37.1. So in our case, the brand new one has approximately, right, it's changing, but it's 36.9 or 37 ohms. This is good part. And if I will go ahead and bring my 12 volts, it will be nicely audibly clicking. But trust me, that's the way it is. I'm not going to do that. Or do you really need to hear that? If you are doing this, you have to be very careful not to create any shorts or anything. Did you hear that? This valve does that. The other one, it's dead. It doesn't do anything. Yep, I'm touching it. Dead as a doornail. The words of another YouTuber. So what is left to be done is to transfer the bracket on the other valve. Oh, I'm glad this gave. Sometimes these little Phillips screws are super tight due to the rust. But this one moved on good. Did I say what is the number of the Toyota part? 90910- 12065 Will it be visible? Hopefully you can see it and unfortunately the price was similar It was only like 25 bucks cheaper, but it's not available so forgive me for being a sinner and Not doing it the proper way many of you keep complaining that sometimes I don't use the OEM parts Here we go And you are handling it be careful with this you don't want to accidentally break it so you can see The paints and everything it's the same. I Marked with the white there are two vacuum lines I didn't know if it matters if you flip them, so I mark the outside. The vacuum line inside of the engine will have that white paint on it, so I will put it exactly the same way. As I said, there's not very good access. So I don't know how to film 
those details for you. But basically, this is the way it was there. Uh, on the left is the connector and the vacuum lines are on the driver's side. I will put it first in like this, watching the lines correctly. None white is the inside. Basically coming from here, you will know where the location is. Sorry for the flickering. That's the lights. Now it changed good. And here is the valve with two vacuum lines, electric connector and 12 millimeter bolt. I was making space for myself. So I move this. The diagnostic port. And I believe I didn't disconnect anything else. Now when the truck came it was running correctly so when I will start it up right now it will again run normally and to trigger P0402 if you want to trigger that that normally takes a couple of days a couple of cycles so there will be nothing obvious immediately it's not like when you erase the code, the code came immediately back. It takes a couple of days. So there's basically nothing else to check the day the code is erased and the repair is finished. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumb up. Be subscribed. Have notification on so you don't miss the future videos. Thank you for watching and have a great day.